Well, you know, the gaming industry is controlled by uh, by a handful of people. Um, Tencent is being, you know, the, the company that owns the most amount of, of video, ga video game company. And uh, historically, players had absolutely no say. But the key to our ecosystem is to say, we're building an ecosystem for gamers that's actually controlled by gamers. Yeah. Uh, different use cases. One that I, uh, I like is the anti-cheating and reputation. Um, it is something that is not often talked about from game, which is one of the biggest uh, threats to the gaming industry, notably with AI. Actually, the best esports team in the world that is building on top of our protocol. And those teams are paying on a, us on a monthly basis, so it's a SaaS subscription. And uh, that, that payment is also an XBG token. Rocket League is, is a game that has 200 million um, players, like active players. And wow. uh, they, are the, they are the world champions on, on, on this game. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, world-renowned esports team. Mm -hmm. We've organized last year the biggest uh, esports tournaments in uh, in Web3, and we had a hundred k of cash price with, uh, and that was sponsored by Brave, the the, the browser. Welcome to Dan Dejan. We take the more risky aspects of crypto and digital assets and try to find the next ten to hundred x play. So today we're talking about export, and this is an interesting use case. It looks like they have a couple of different layers for it. Well, first of all, there's a, a game identification layer. So everything that uh, you need to know for a gamer, that they can move from one game to another game to another game across multiple platforms and own their identity and have different opportunities presented to them. And the next part is they have actual launch pad for new games that are coming out. So there's a, it's a multifaceted different layers that uh, is actually being produced here. And before we get into the deep dive, I have to be 100% transparent and tell everybody that I am investing in this project. So uh, this may come as no surprise to many of you who have been on the uh, channel uh, previously, but everything I talk about on this channel and on the regular channel of Digital Asset News are things that I've actually invested into and it's the reason why I am talking about it. So 100% transparency, I am going to be investing into Xborg. Now let's jump into the deep dive and talk about why I actually invested in this. So what we're gonna do is like I will always do on this channel is kind of break things down because we really wanna take a look at the cut. What is it uh, as far as like with Xborg, we're gonna take a look at the community, the utility of the team and the tokenomics themselves. So before we get into all that, we must talk about the dynamics and a little bit about a uh, little background as far as gaming. Cause I know some of the people here, they don't really feel like gaming could be a big thing. But as a reminder, the video game industry is a heck of a lot bigger than it used to be. And it continues to grow and it's crushing a lot of the entertainment industry in its wake. So of course, if we're taking a look at global box office, people who go to the movies, I don't really do that too much anymore, but it did happen. In 2019, 39 billion, of course, it's uh, it's decreased exponentially. Now we take a look at gaming revenues in 2021, and I'm sure it's gone up since then. Mobile console and PC, you're looking at $180 billion compared to the paltry 39 billion. Now, if we take a look and extrapolate that out and say and break it down by mobile games, console, and downloadables, we can see that mobile games actually do uh, the, the big chunk of majority, console pretty well in 56, and 37 billion in, in the PC game industry. So Nothing to laugh at. But if we break it down even further and take a look at who's actually gaming, is it just like 10 people spending 29 billion or 180 billion? No, it's a lot of people out there in the world. And we take a look at Statista, we can see that in 2015, he had 2.03 billion people in the planet who were gamers. And in 2023, which we just crossed over 2024, he had 3.22 and we have an ex expectation of 3.32 billion. And as a reminder, we've only got 8 billion people on this planet. So the preferences, breaking down casual to adventure games, you can see that casual is the majority of the bulk, but action shooter and racing as well. Casual again, 63%, almost 2 billion. And the reason is, is because people, I know some people laugh at this, but uh, look, I think we're all stressed out. And I think there's a reason why people play games. One of those reasons is to relax, decompress, take a break, escape from reality, which actually does work out pretty well. And of course the benefits of, of play are, are numerous. We can see here again, from Statista or Visa, 78% introduce new friendships, relationships. People like to play games again to unwind, to provide stress relief. You name it, it's got it. And of course, it's also good for the family. So 
to catch everything up like we just did, let's bring in somebody who can help us understand what Xborg is. And we've got Luis Regis, the founder of Xborg. Luis, welcome to the show for the first time. Hey, Rob. Uh, thanks so much for, for having me. You know, very much looking forward to uh, digging deeper into, into what we do and you know, what are we adding to the gaming world and you know, what's the value that we put up there and potentially to what extent are we helping the mass adoption of, of crypto, which I believe is a topic that, that your um, audience could, could, be, uh, could be into. Yeah, so this was it's an interesting thing because I was reached out by a mutual friend. I usually listen to this friend when he says to invest in things and it's worked out pretty well for me, we'll say. And one of these, he said, hey, you got to take a look at this. And when I first got into it, I was like, I don't get it. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm sorry. I, like, I don't get this at all. But there was a good video that you put out. There's a link in the description. It was about five minutes and explained to everybody in layman's terms what you guys are doing. So the first thing you said, there was three points. You said, who are you as a gamer? Your digital self matters. And again, and the gaming industry is not equitable and, and democratic. And there's three points I took away from the first piece, which is who are you as a gamer? Because you don't own your data. All your accomplishments are gone and you have no opportunities. So can you just break it down for us real quick as far as like, because a lot of people or some of the people on my show aren't big gamers, especially uh, Web 2 to Web 3. So what does this mean? Yeah, so, uh, you know, as you as you rightfully pointed in the intro, uh, gaming is, is a huge industry. It's like, you know, far greater than the entertainment industry. Um, and 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 so it's obviously a tremendous opportunity to tackle, but fundamentally, what what happens is when you play games, so you you're very devoted to your game, your spending, and and my personal story is I spent thousands of hours on Call of Duty, um, and and th that's very much who I am online. Is you know who I'm who I am offline, and, and offline is 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 different in the sense that what I do, you know. Online is just you know proper to me, um, but the thing is, what's happening online actually does not belong to you. Like offline, I have my CV, which I can you know show to the world, and I have my credentials. But what's happening online is actually just not yours. So what's happening is, as you play games. So in my case, was Call of Duty. Um, on one day, my account got banned, and and I actually had no reasons to get it back and so that was personally for me that was like a good six seven years of history that just was wiped away and um what this means is you as a gamer you don't have any authority over your game data it's also very hard to aggregate your data across the different platforms that you use so you know you said and 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 that's correct you we have mobile we have console, we have PC, there is no single place where you can see all of my data. And most importantly, it's not just about you owning the data, it's about what you can do with this data. You now, we we believe that with AI and as the productivity of the world increases, people will have more time. So what you, what you said about gaming being a big thing, it's only going to be bigger. And we believe that as people will seek to have extra income, they will seek to make money or at least get utility from the um, uh, from the time that they spend online. And that's exactly what we do at Expo, which is building the identity of gamers and then building utilities on top of this um, data for, for gamers. Excellent. Okay. So that's the first part to it. So let's take a look at, at the second part because we're talking again. And there was a second piece where you said your digital self matters. I didn't really understand this, but then you broke it down. You said, okay, if you go from one game or 20 games, what it doesn't matter, and you go to a new platform or a new game, you're essentially starting from scratch. And then you said, well, imagine if your achievements followed you everywhere you went. So like if you are like a badass someplace else in like PvP or some other different types of, of game, and you come to a whole new brand new game, you can, everything that falls with you can say, oh, this is the guy. This is the guy from over here. So you can have, instead of starting from, from zero, you can have, you know, decent matchups instead of going against rookie against rookie. And of course, it would help you. And the big thing I got out of this was the games could then, of course, reach out to you for promotions because who else can do a better promotion than the people that actually use your product? So if you got somebody who is really big in that space 
and they're making you know a, a massive wave into it, why wouldn't you reach out to those people and go, look, man, you're doing a great job. You know, a lot of people are following you and, and watching you. So why don't we just team up and you can promote our product because you love it so much? Who else is a better evangelical? Is that pretty much what you know, essentially what we're saying? Yeah, and and that's you know again that's uh, well that's the uh, the, the, the same direction we on and uh, but it's only going to increase uh, um if we want to go into uh, more um, new content we saw the um, apple vision pro and apple vision pro is only emphasizing the the trend of your digital self will like blend between your your actual self uh, but again none of what you do online is yours and you know what we bring here is really a way for you to um, to get your data, process your data, and, and and do cool stuff with your data. And you know what you what you uh, discussed about so the the games that can directly reach out to the to the players. That's what we call uh, well. That's the notification protocol. And uh, here, let, let's just um, discuss what this does exactly for gamers. In a nutshell, as a gamer. So once you enter our ecosystem and aggregate data across um, our different apps, you get your profile and obviously you you know aggregate your data. Now you can set your attention rate, which will be the price that a brand or a game will pay if they want to contact you. So instead of having very um, intrusive uh, notifications from advertisers like Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram. Well, here it's the opposite. Is you as a gamer, you can say, well, to reach out to me is going to cost you a dollar. Uh, and you know, against this dollar, I'm telling you who I am as a gamer. So you're you're telling them, um, well, your profile, and it can be that you're a top player on Counter Strike or you're a top player on League of Legends. And you know, on the opposite, the brands, instead of paying an intermediary, uh, well, they directly send the money to the gamer, and that's just one example. On, on how you can make an extra living um, with the protocol. And, and here we're not talking about you know Ponzi yields of like unsustainable. This is this is actually how the advertisement uh, industry works. But instead of, of rooting the capital via an intermediary, that goes to the player. And that that to me is the best use case of our protocol today. Gotcha. Excellent. So we want to, so those pieces, that's, I think is a, is a pretty good uh, a use case there. And then of course, the last one you talked about is like the, the gaming industry is not equitable and democratic. And I think there's a little bit of an outcry in the web two community because they don't own anything. And like, I think that's a, that, that's a big problem. I mean, the data thing, of course, we just talked about. And of course, with the gaming, the games themselves, they don't, I mean, you're renting, essentially, you're not really doing anything else. So there's zero opportunities. And you have zero say in the matter as far as like, where does this game go? What are the level ups? What can we do to actually increase uh, the playability of this game? It's like, it's kind of out the window. Well, you know, the gaming industry is controlled by, uh, by a handful of people. Um, Tencent is being, you know, the, the company that owns the most amount of, of video, ga video game company. And uh, historically, players had absolutely no say over anything. So, you know, really, as a, and, and I like to talk about the value flow in gaming, but it really just is gamers that spend money um, and, and sure they get like a, an enjoyable experience in return. Um, but that's it, and and the alignment in of value in Web three is, is is very different. For example, when you buy an asset, well, you detain this asset, so it's yours, and you can resell it. Um, there are countless examples of um, games going from one version to like version one to version two, where the assets are not transferable. So what you ended up paying, like a a, a DLC or a skin on any game, well, you know. It's just over, and, and so that's is very much a, a perishable asset, and um, I'm sure we'll discuss about our community and what we do for 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 governance. Um, but the key to our ecosystem is to say we're building an ecosystem for gamers that's actually controlled by gamers, and um, it, it is something that I, I, I I'm very much um, passionate about, and. Um, you know, being super close to the community and understanding what what they do, 
and what they want. Because at the end of the day, that's our users. Like that's the people that use our protocol. Excellent, got it. So that would lead us to the utility. So let's talk about what we're, because we pretty much talked about it essentially, but here's really what it does, right? Player discovery. And of course, this is from the website. There will be a link in the description for xborg.com. And player discovery gets scouted by esports teams or find yourself a new ranked teammate based on your gaming credentials. You also have another one called enhanced gameplay, like we talked about. Instead of starting from zero, of course, you can have in-game experiences tailored to who you are as a player, whether you be that great, fantastic player or somebody like me who just sucks at everything as far as like gaming, and they can put me in with the rookies. Asset lending. Use your gaming reputation as your proof of skill collateral when lending GameFi assets. Before we go on, talk to me about this one. Because I didn't, I I mean, it's it sounds fantastic, but where do we go from here? Yeah, so asset lending. Um, so in Web3, um, um, in Web3, the in-game assets um, are NFTs. So you you have the complete possession of your of your assets. Um, sometimes it's centralized. We won't go into the, the, the technicality of it, um, but it is anyway something that is in your wallets and that you can send. Now, what's what's happening is in uh, in the, the the most played games in Web three, you have a pretty high lending market. So what's usually happening is you have the big whales that buy the assets, and then the players that uh, rent the assets to the big whales. Um, but today, when you, as an owner of an asset, you lend an asset to a person, you have no, um, you don't know who that person is, right? Um, and so what you end up doing is asking for collateral because you don't trust that person and you have no background info on that person. Now, what we bring here as innovation is that you pledge your identity. So the owner sees to whom you're lending. And instead of having collateral, it's like slashing in um, in, in proof of stake. Um, so instead of depositing collateral, which can be you know ether or USDC, you just pledge your reputation as a as a player. And should you um, steal the assets or not give back the assets, then you get slashed from the network, and then that affects your reputation. Um, now it's a bit more complex because there is a a escrow um, to prevent you from stealing the assets. Um, but you misbehaving with the assets alters your reputation um, anywhere across the protocol. Excellent. All right, thanks for breaking that down. So then, of course, in the last piece here, besides the asset lending, which is pretty interesting, is the investment potential. You un unlock investment opportunities in the most uh, upcoming games. And we're going to talk about that, which would be essentially the launch pad, which you guys have. And you guys have already been successful. I think you've launched already six or seven different projects. Am I wrong? Yeah, we, um, we actually just closed one yesterday. Um, and um, we did, yeah, we did a bunch of a uh, bunch of projects, six, seven, eight. I'm, I'm I'm not sure of the exact number, but yeah, we um and we I mean we have more than ten in the in the in the pipeline. So, uh, I mean, as as far as the the use cases are, are concerned, it, it is really here important to highlight that um, today it's permissions. So today we have the the or the data is in the network, but we are the only one that can build applications on top of this data. The thing to understand is this year it's going to be permissionless. So that means any app developer or any gamer will be able to build use case on top of your data. Um, and, and that really um, gives us so many different use cases, um, there are different types of applications that can be built on top of it. Um, you know, for example, whitelist and, and giveaways are a big thing in, 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 in gaming. But the thing again is you don't know to whom you're giving away things. And so like, for example, a giveaway tool can be created where entries to the giveaway are dependent on your identity. So let's say I'm a, uh, I'm a shooter type of game and uh, I want to do a giveaway. Well, it makes a whole lot of sense to ask um, the, the like top shooter profiles to enter the giveaway, not and not another demographic. So at the end of the day, your giveaway serves a purpose, which is different than just um, you know uh, 
which which we know in Web3, they, they love it, but speculators. And, and you want to, sometimes speculators don't bring so much value. And as a game, what you care about is is game usage more than speculators. Um, but there are, there are different use cases. One that I, I like is the anti-cheating and reputation. Um, it is something that is not often talked about, but uh, in game, you have a lot of cheating. So you have a lot of bots, a lot of people that use, um, that do modding. So basically try to circumvent the system. And um, with uh, our identity protocol and the reputation within the protocol, well, we prevent cheating from, from game, which is one of the biggest uh, threats to the gaming industry, notably with AI, because AI will, like, you'll, you'll basically not know against you, am, am I playing against a, um, an AI bot or, or a real person? And, you know, tying your gaming profile with our ID, make sure that we, um, and, and that's uh, called a proof of personhood. And that's uh, one of the things that we do. But really, use cases can be limitless, uh, can go from tournament platforms to recommending games to uh, uh, like a, a matchmaking engine that would match you with like pretty much a social network. You, you know what? That just, it just, there was a light bulb that just went off, which was everybody's really obsessed about it airdrops these days airdrop this and airdrop that everybody's yeah. fantastic you know but the problem is is that there's a lot of bots that are just going around and doing their thing or there's people who are gaming the system going oh well, i'll just i'll just spin up 50 100 200 different wallets and then i will do the airdrop and i'll get 200 different of these airdrops and that'll be that because how it's it's difficult to prove you are who you say you are i gotta tell you i wish we would have talked louise i wish i wish we would have talked before because uh, me and my partners, we actually purchased the uh, the IP rights and trademark to that old f fashion game, Flappy Bird. And we're going to do this thing called a Flappathon for all these different communities. The problems that we're going to come up with is we're going to have a problems with bots. So I can see how this would actually solve a problem. Looks pretty good. Now let's get to the big stuff. So the cut, the community utility, the team, and the tokenomics. The tokenomics themselves. So it looks like you guys have a total supply of $1 billion. It's going to be an ERC-20 token so far, but it looks like you guys are going multi-chain, incorrect or correct? Uh, it is It is correct. So the some, we haven't discussed about one thing that's important is um, all of what we build works at scale. And, okay. and, and here it's like any identity, well, because you think, you know, if you think of it, any identity protocol, if it doesn't have like hundreds of, of thousands or millions of users, you're not going to have so much um, traction. And um, what's key to discuss here is um, how do you actually bring this network to millions of, of players, which is, you know, I guess is is our biggest um, upside today, but and, and our biggest achievement to date. Um, but the point is, Today, we focus on aggregating data. And at some point, um, and that's going to be Q2 this year, is we'll have our own um, layer two. Uh, so that means the, the data will be posted on our own layer. And um, so today, we're chain agnostic. Um, we have different integrations. We have integrations with EVM blockchains, um, Avalanche with uh, SWE as well. Uh, but the main place where data will be hosted will be on our own blockchain. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I think it's a it's a wise play because it's not like uh, Ethereum can do everything. I think the days of just a single chain are behind us. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, I think uh, multi-chain is the way to go. All right. So we have that piece. And of course, there's also the gaming launch, which we'll get to in a second. With the token itself, we're looking at five different things. Payments and fees. The XBorg token is used for all payments and transaction fees within the XBorg ecosystem. Give us an example of like what would be a payment. Uh, the example we discussed about that brands can reach out to you as a gamer. Yeah. Well, the payments is in XBG tokens. Um, so, well, uh, okay. it, it, it does not exactly happen that way because when we talk to the brands like uh, NVIDIA, Razer, uh, KitKat Gaming, you know, they, and you also have compliance reasons. Like you can't have tokens on your balance sheet. So you you buy in fiat, like a normal payments. And what we do in the back end is we, we convert those to XBG and then 
we distribute XBG tokens to the to the players across the network. And, and that's just one, obviously one use case. Then gaming launchpad, that's also where we use XBG um, as fees. So the game that wants to be on the launchpad actually has to pay. Uh, well, today it's not the case because we haven't launched the token. Mm -hmm. Today, our biggest uh, way in which we derive revenues and uh, and and get get fees as a as a consequence is via uh, GamerBase. So GamerBase today, well, we actually just launched it, but we have the best esports teams in the world um, that are building on top of GamerBase. So we've announced NIP, so Ninjas in Pyjama and Team BDS. Mm -hmm. uh, March, we are announcing actually the best esports team in the world that is building on top of our protocol. And those teams are paying on a, us on a monthly basis. So it's a SaaS subscription. And uh, that, that payment is also an XBG token. Wow. Excellent. Okay, gotcha. So what uh, I just showed everybody, of course, was the launch pad. And like, like you said, it's been like six, seven, eight or something like that. All those games uh, have been launched right now. Now, uh, this was back in 2022, summer of 2023. And of course, I think there's one that you just had that's just more, more recent, like you talked about. But those are games. Some are in beta. Some are playable. And it looks like some are going to be rolled out at some point. So it's looking good in, in that situation. And everybody, you can uh, there's a link in the description for all that stuff. So you can check out the actual launch pad. But at least that's pretty much uh, correct there. Yeah. Um, I would say the key focus here is... Uh... So our community is composed of, of gamers and, and like pure gamers. Um, obviously, they are speculators, um, but the bulk of it is, is, is gamers because we started um, with a very strong foundation as, as, as a competitive community of, of, of gamers. Mm -hmm. We've organized last year the biggest uh, esports tournaments in, uh, in Web3. And we had a 100K of cash price with, uh, and that was sponsored by Brave. The, the the browser and um that means that when we have a game we create the game with our players so we don't really obviously we look at the tokenomics and the in-game economy but fundamentally we believe that if a game is not fun there is no way it's going to pass so yeah. you know it does not matter if the tokenomics are very good or if the team is very good if our players say the game is not fun was simply not looking at it. And, and we believe that this increases, well, first, the reputation of the launchpad, but also just the overall, the odds of success of the opportunities. Perfect. So then to finish this up, of course, the incentives of revenue share, and this was interesting, 50% of export revenue is sent to the reward pool, providing staking yield to XBG stackers, weighted by ecosystem contribution, very nice. Gated access, of course, this was... Uh, uh, for the launch pad. So the more that you have, the more of a, a discount that you get for the launch pad and uh, ITO sales. And of course, it's also going to be used for gas. So that will be the utility side. And then just like you talked about, uh, and we just, we've kind of going in a, in, in a circle here, but yeah, gaming application layer, multi-chain. Looks like you've guys got Arbitrum, Avalanche, and Sui. Uh, pretty good. Layer twos and as well as layer ones. You got the gaming launch pad, identity layer, Gamer base, and there's this new one coming out, AI Companion App. Can you speak to that? And this is probably yeah. something that's going to happen way later, but it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, we believe AI will will play a big role in gaming. Uh, and for, for players, um, there are a lot of, um, today, like companion apps. So what a companion app is, essentially, you have your, your character that you can chat to. Um, so it's like a, a chatbot, but one that is um, personalized. And so it's actually an amazing use case for us because when you play to when you sorry when you converse um, with with a chatbot, well, a chatbot has no information about who you are. And for example, if you want to ask the chatbot, "What should I do to get better at this game?" Well, they they really have no background information because the the chatbot is not linked to your gaming activity. And that's the bridge that we that we bring in. And we actually had a lot of interest for, for this AI companion app. And uh, so we are planning it. Um, we still haven't put this on the on the exact roadmap. We know it's going to come, I would say, like earliest would be um, Q3 of this year. But 
well, likely looking at, at an alpha launch uh, end of the year. The current focus is really to scale the, the credentials on the network. Um, as you understand, and as the graph shows, the core of the of the circle is your identity, and then what circulates around it is the applications that use the identity. So, you no, know, we're still quite young, so we're, we're not trying to to spread our, ourselves uh, too thin here. All right, so we got that excellent. And then uh, also, just to go over the, of course, the cut community utility team and tokenomics to break this down, so everybody knows. Uh, also, I'll link this in the description as well. So it looks like 2% liquidity, 15% team, 7.5% advisors, 4% for private financing. They have to be done. 12% for community financing, and then almost 25% for development and growth, reserve and treasury 20, and then community rewards. That's a big bulk. Community rewards, 15, reserve well, and treasury to keep the lights on, and then 24.5% uh, development and growth. You know, the earliest uh, financing we, we had was, was with... Uh, Business angels, and um, that's the only thing we treat as private funding. Uh, we've seen the launch pad, and one of like the bulk of our community has been raised from players um, directly, and and obviously like uh, advisors, KOLs in in the space, people that you have to bring in, and the partners, and they're pretty big partners. Of course, Swissborg, uh, pretty big guys. I mean, they've been around since 2017. Also, Brave, Polygon, Myria, Zilliqa, Ultra Community Gaming. YAG, and I'm uh, not for sure about these other two ones, That's, but uh, Team BDS on the left. Uh, uh -huh. So Team BDS is uh, Rocket League is is a game that has 200 million um, players, like active players, and oh. uh, they are the they are the world champions on 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 this game. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, world renowned esports team, like you know, close to like a million of fans. Yeah. Um, and um, they are uh, they are building natively on top of our protocol. So excellent. It, you know, it, it's not like a, the kind of partnerships we see in Web three where there is not much substance. Is they actually are like building natively on our protocol. And uh, the app is uh, is already live for well, not Team BDS. We're actually launching it at the end of this week, but. Ninjas in pajamas is live. Ninja in pajamas. Yeah, big guys, big guys. Okay. So, yeah. And then also, it looks like you guys have uh, Amazon, Respawn, Apex, Need for Speed, Meta, Swiss Board, Credit, <laughs> Credit Suisse, Rothschild, Carry, ENS. And I see uh, uh, Ivan on Tech, Wolf of All Streets. And then uh, my man, Johnny from uh, Crypto Banter, is in here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We, I mean, uh, that's the current state uh, of um, well, it's, it's actually not the, the like the current state, but it's just you know things just keep moving. We are adding amazing people to um, you know us like to to Expo. Uh, there, there are so many great people joining uh, that I'm sure your audience will recognize very familiar faces um, and. Um, you know, as far as KOLs is concerned, one thing that I want to bring in is um, our community actually decided whether we would do a round, like an investment round for KOLs, uh, which is which is quite unique in the space um, to have your supporters vote on, on that kind of um, initiative. Yeah, it's uh, it's good that everybody can vote on it. And of course, uh, like, like the intro uh, we talked about, I will, pr I will probably be investing into this round. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. So everybody, so as you know, uh, I don't talk about anything unless I've invested into it because I'm supremely biased. But I try to give the information, the best information I possibly can. And that's why I brought Luis on. So then to wrap this up, it looks like there is uh, for a registration for uh, the token itself. Looks like you guys are going to start this off in like 37, 36 days or something like that. So people can actually sign up and get into the, is this would be like the public sale? Um, so that's a pre-sale that we are doing and the public. Um, so you have the pre-sale and then the, the token goes, you know, live just after. And, um, and that is something that we are having. So we have two phases. One is you register for the sale. So it's going to be like a gated sale. That means if you don't pre-register, you can't get in. Course. And um, 
yeah, so this phase is ending in, in 37 days. So we're looking at like, uh, it's pretty much going to be beginning of um, of, uh, of March for the actual pre-sale. And um, yeah, that's essentially the only way in which you can buy the token now. And uh, obviously once it's trading, you'll, you'll be able to purchase the token, but uh, yeah, so you can register today. Well, we've, we've launched this, uh, what, uh, three days ago? Ooh, and yeah. uh, today, I think we have 1.7 million of interest. Um, we'll likely do do a lot more. Um, we Because uh, we haven't actually discussed too much about this. So we haven't like do, done any, any kind of promotion yet. That's okay. I just want to let people know that it's out there. It's available. So... Luis, to finish up, because I know you got to get out of here. I'm sorry for taking so much of your time. So here's the pros that I saw. First of all, like the gamer identification and really putting it out there, I think is it's a smart idea. It's a good idea. And I think it's something that actually is needed because like we talked about, there's only so there's only so many opportunities in the from the previous Web 2, almost none, to bringing people into the Web 3 space. I think there's there's opportunities there in that in that situation. Of course, that's the whole thing for number two. The third part was the launch pad. I do like launch pads, especially when they're fair launches, especially like these new games that are coming out. So I feel like if you're giving them, of course, the identification, the opportunities that, that comes along with that, as well as the launch pad in between, because there's different layers for, for the token, that's a great thing. And then of course, you guys have great partners. You've, you guys have uh, put together uh, a lot of different people that I think uh, can really help you guys scale. And that's the big thing. However, Having said that, let's talk about the cons because nothing is perfect in this world, unfortunately. And this is what I see. First one, competition. Will people come out and compete against you? Debatable. There's a lot of launch pads and that, and that, and that can't be oversold. So we got to take a look at that. Maybe this is a competition. The next ones, will players accept it for Web2? I got to tell you, everybody I talk to as far as like with Web2, they hate NFTs. They hate everything that has to do with Web3, but I think they're slowly coming around to it. This isn't a cash grab like in 2021. There's actual real value and real utility, but I could be wrong. Then third one, launch their get to deploy fully. Again, the different uh, eight different projects we took a look at, they're, they've rolled out, but they haven't got all the games out and the tokens as well. And the fourth one for the cons is it's risky, everybody. And that's why we have the rules right below me. Everything's a scam until here otherwise. Don't use exchanges or leave things on exchanges. Don't use leverage, take profits along the way. And of course, it's all gone, meaning that uh, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Luis, anything I missed here or anything you want to say about this piece? No, I completely agree. Um, and I think on the on the cons, I, I also agree. I think our take on competition is um, today the the Web3 space is so small. Like it, it, it is so small that we don't think of our competitors as actual competitors, but mostly as partners. Because our interest is not getting a piece of the pie, but growing the pie together. And, and that's my philosophy to approaching competition. Um, now, obviously, medium term, that's going to be something that is, uh, is, is important. I would say, you know, the big pros about what we do is really the network of like, well, it's building the network, but it's also distributing the network. And when we when we have Team BDS, Ninjas in Pyjamas, and, and by the way, these are entities that, like, they are they are making their first steps into Web3 with us. Um, right. And, and these are the only two we've announced, but, like, there are more than 10 coming. And so that makes me confident about the, and obviously I'm super biased here, but, like, about our ability to scale the network, which yeah which is which is essentially what we need for this to have true utility that's well said and i gotta tell you those partnerships are looking pretty good so Luis, again thank you so much for taking all this time with us we appreciate it everybody's watched the video for now you can find all the links in the description everything that we just talked about and that will, will conclude it for the deep dive for expert so Luis, thanks so much for stopping by we appreciate it. and everybody at home see you on the next one